My name is Abby. I am a senior at Cornell University. My parents are both originally from Ghana. Being first generation in America, I felt that I should be helping to create a better space for everyone. I was involved in service in high school. Service is a part of my identity. So when I saw that I'd been accepted into the Cornell tradition, I knew that I'd found a space. As a senior, I became very involved in the leadership as well. So you know I'm on the Student Advisory Council, right? I'm going to meet up with a group of them and we're just going to talk about how last semester went and goals for the next semester um, and catch up. Like, are you sad to walk away from it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it a lot. Senior since your last day. The thing I think I'll miss about tradition when I leave is the people that I've met through this organization, but I'll, I'll be back. I would like to be a very dedicated alum. It's just always amazing to see like how many tradition alum have not only been successful in their career, but have taken their career and brought it back to Cornell tradition. I'm Doug Rutson, and I graduated from Cornell in 1987. I grew up on food stamps and on welfare. My parents were divorced. My mom had lost her job. I came to Cornell with no money. I walked into the Cornell Tradition office and I saw a woman moving boxes. So I asked if I could pick one up and help her and she introduced herself as the director of the Cornell Tradition. I told her about my background and she said, I'll give you a job. You can be our first student employee. We're gonna help pay your loans now, and we're making a bet on you that you're gonna continue to work in the public interest, trying to make your world a better place. Hey, good to see you, Doug. Thank you so much for coming. It's really a thrill to have you here. And you were part of the inaugural class. Correct. Mm -hmm. I was full financial aid. Now your daughter's coming to Cornell. You take a kid who is on food stamps with no money and give him a shot, and in one generation... He's paying his, his kids education. Right, if we don't need financial aid. I can actually give back through the tuition. It's not the same kind of donation that others no, might but make, it, but it's, it, it, for it, me, an important part. But what I thought was so cool about the Cornell tradition is they were willing to bet on me at the beginning. We were making a bet because we, we saw some potential. But you're right, it was, a, it was a, an, an investment. And I think that we, as a group that went before, need to figure out how we can provide opportunities for current students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have different kinds of immune cells going on. We have the T cell, he's the main superhero. Then the measles virus, and like little measles henchmen. This is our last class. It's a good way to end a Cornell career. Never expected it to end with puppets, but I don't mind. <laughs> As a senior, um, embarking on a really unknown journey, a lot of things are up in the air right now. I feel a lot of anxiety. I am now a senior in the College of Arts and Sciences, and I've been a Tradition Fellow ever since my freshman year. I was a Cornell Tradition Fellow in the very first class. Well then. Back some years ago. <laughs> what kinds of things have you done with the Tradition? Oh, so many things. <laughs> um, through the Tradition, I've been able to get a job on campus, and I used my support account to actually go to Tanzania two summers ago, and I did rounds in a hospital there. And it was very, very compelling to actually work in international medicine as opposed to just sitting in a classroom and learning about the issues. So this is us during our field experience. We had to wear white coats and then everybody used to think that we were doctors. And we're just like, no, no, no. This is our first day in the surgery rotation. So that was so exciting. I wasn't sure if I could handle it, but after a while, like you got, you got used to it. We were with um, an American surgeon who actually does surgeries for free. 
I was really inspired by that because I found that I could see myself doing the same thing. So I brought a few photos as well. Through the Cornell tradition, I was able to work with blind, deaf, and mute people in the Caribbean. And we needed to figure out a way that we could create job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we set up a mattress producing factory. We were able to convert this workshop for the blind, which was losing money every year, into a $3 million business. And we did the same thing in places like Antigua and Barbados. So it was really a, a wonderful experience and really opened my eyes up to international public service, which mm -hmm. then culminated in 2013. Uh, President Obama asked me to join him on a panel at the UN General Assembly. The focus was on the legal framework for civil society. So here's a picture mm -hmm. with President Obama, the Deputy UN Secretary General. All of this work and my focus on nonprofit organizations goes back to that very first summer with the Cornell tradition. The components of the tradition, everything from the Student Advisory Council to the summer support that allowed you to go to Tanzania to the requirement for public service to the requirement to have a job allowed me to develop skills, develop talent, which then led me to where I am today. So I'm sure the same will happen to you. I can see I am great things in your future. Very, very <laughs> hopeful. And you know, I wouldn't even be at the place I am now with my current interests and my current hopes were it not for my membership in the Tradition Fellowship. And then also getting to speak with alumni like you and seeing the things that you do. It makes me really hopeful that like, I can go on and also make the change that I so desperately would like to see in the world.